Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A young man lives in a bubble built in his bedroom, completely isolated from the rest of the world, until the day he must abandon the safety of his home and go on a bizarre journey to find the girl he loves. Today we'll recap the story of the 2001 movie, Bubble Boy. When Jimmy Livingston was born, he had to be hospitalized because he had no immunity. Therefore, a single germ could kill him. But at the age of four, he was able to leave the hospital and his parents took him home. His mother would not allow any other children near him. The couple takes the boy directly to his room, where they had built a bubble to protect him from the outside world. Attached to the bubble were two retractable arms, which his mother used to be able to touch him. Despite his illness, Jimmy was a happy and grateful child for his family. Mrs. Livingston was the one who cut Jimmy's hair and taught him everything he knew. The woman even selected the magazines and TV shows that the young man watched. The neighborhood boys would occasionally appear at the window to tease the bubble boy, but his mother was always there to defend him. Everything that Jimmy touched had to pass through the decontamination chamber first, including the terrible soy-based cookies that his mother gave him to eat. At 16, instead of getting a car like the kids in the neighborhood, Jimmy got an electric guitar and spent the whole day playing the instrument. One day, a new family moves into the neighborhood and Jimmy falls in love with Chloe, his neighbor. During the following years he would spend hours cleaning his window, just so he could spy on the girl. After class, Chloe is given a ride by her classmates, who are surprised to discover that the young woman lives next door to the bubble boy. They tell some rumors they have heard about Jimmy and Chloe is irritated to hear bad things about the boy. She gets out of the car and walks toward the Livingston family home. When she knocks on the door, she is greeted by Morton and the man allows Chloe to enter. While he goes to the kitchen, the girl observes the giant air tunnel that runs through the house and decides to follow it to check what's at the other end. She walks up the stairs and soon reaches Jimmy's room. Within seconds, they find a common interest, for they both love Land of the Lost. While they are talking, Chloe discovers that the boy plays guitar and asks if he can teach her. The next day, as promised, the young woman returns so they can rehearse together. Their friendship grows, and every day she finds time to spend with Jimmy. Even with the boy trapped inside a bubble, his mother was always around to keep an eye on them. At Christmas, Chloe gives him a guinea pig, so that the young man could have company even when she was not there. A few weeks later, during the night, Chloe comes through Jimmy's window, carrying some beers. It was her birthday that day and the girl was sad that her best friend didn't come to her party. So she decides to take the party to him. Chloe intends to kiss him and enters the decontamination chamber. However, before she can enter the bubble, the young woman ends up sleeping. Months later, she graduates from high school and gets a stupid boyfriend to accompany her to graduation. When Mark enters Jimmy's room, Chloe introduces the two of them and asks to be excused to go to the bathroom. Meanwhile, Mark lights a cigarette and nearly destroys the bubble. Then the young woman returns and the bubble boy watches the two of them leave together. Two years later, the couple is still together. Mark insists on spicing up the relationship, but Chloe says she wants to wait until after the wedding. Jimmy was at the window and overhears the whole conversation. When he shares his anguish with his mother, the woman says that she tried to warn him and says that all the girls will leave him one day. Mrs. Livingston goes on to say that Chloe didn't love him, she just felt sorry for him, because no woman would ever marry a guy who can't even touch her. A few days pass and Chloe goes to visit her friend. She shows up with news and tells him that Mark has asked her to marry him. The ceremony will take place next Saturday in Niagara Falls. Since Jimmy is her best friend, Chloe asks him if he thinks Mark is the right person for her. However, the boy refuses to answer her and Chloe tells him that she did something for him. While the young woman puts the box in the decontamination chamber, Jimmy returns the guinea pig and states that he doesn't want it anymore. Disappointed, the girl leaves and Jimmy experiences the worst day of his life. When he finally gets up the courage to open the box, he finds a globe made by Chloe with a note saying that she loves him. Regretful for what he has done, Jimmy spends hours building a bubble suit so he can get himself to Niagara Falls and stop the wedding. He has only three days to get there and his bubble suit needs to last the entire way. Initially, the boy has trouble walking with the thing and rolls down the stairs. His next challenge is to get through the door, but after a few attempts, he manages to accomplish the mission. Now, for the first time in many years, Jimmy stands outside his room and takes the opportunity to enjoy every detail of the outside world. In a few minutes, he learns how to walk with that thing and runs to the bus station. He says that he needs to go to Niagara Falls and the attendant informs him that the ticket costs $260. Since he doesn't have enough money, Jimmy leaves to try another plan. While crossing the road, he is hit by a yellow bus. The driver returns and a group of musicians go to check if the boy is alright. They say they can give Jimmy a ride, and they sing in the vehicle all the way. 
At this point, the boy takes the opportunity to celebrate with them. That morning, when Mrs. Livingston goes to take the coffee to her son, she finds that the boy is not there and becomes desperate. Meanwhile, Jimmy discovers that those people who were giving him a ride were not part of a musical group, but of a cult. On hearing this, the young people feel offended and abandon Jimmy in the middle of the desert. After walking for a few hours, he lies down on the ground to rest, and a vulture appears to devour him. The boy tries to get rid of the bird, but it runs after him. While Jimmy is running away from the animal, his parents go to the bus station and, after talking to the attendant, they find out that the boy was going to Las Vegas. Hours later, the bubble boy meets a biker on the road. The man was trying to fix his motorcycle and Jimmy manages to help him. As a thank you, after hearing the story of the boy who was abandoned in the desert, Slim offers to take him to Niagara Falls. He tells how when he was younger he fell in love with a woman whose nickname was Wildfire. However, she left him to marry a little boy. To prevent the same thing from happening to the boy, they get on the motorcycle and are on their way to Las Vegas. In some remote place in the middle of the desert, the young people meet with the other members of the cult and their spiritual guide reveals that they are there to find out which is the final reincarnation of the Chosen One. When the man removes the handkerchief from the stone, everyone discovers that the Chosen One is a boy surrounded by a glass globe. In this instant, the crazy ones believe that their leader was referring to Jimmy, the young man they threw off the bus. Upon arriving in Las Vegas, the duo decides to stop at the casinos and the bubble boy experiences things he had never imagined. During a show, he is passed from hand to hand through the audience. Then Slim takes it to play the slot machines. At this point, he realizes that he has wasted the entire night in that place, but the biker refuses to leave without first getting some money. So Jimmy takes the scooter he won in a game of chance and continues on his journey, without even saying goodbye to Slim. Later, while the biker is looking for his new friend, he comes across the young people who abandoned him in the desert and goes after them. However, before fleeing, the cult members destroy the man's motorcycle and drive away. Just then, the boy's parents arrive in Las Vegas and go out on the streets looking for him. While Morton is driving, his wife spots Jimmy. Desperate, the woman takes the wheel and stops the car in front of the boy. With the collision, Jimmy ends up being thrown into a train car. When dawn breaks, he realizes that the wagon is full of hideous creatures that make up a circus troupe, and are responsible for the horror show. One of the freaks advises the boy to get the hell out, because if Dr. Freak finds him in that wagon, he will want to incorporate him into his cast. Then the door opens and the doctor appears. Jimmy is surprised to discover that the evil man he has heard so much about is a dwarf. Annoyed to see the young man making fun of his height, the dwarf begins to attack him with a piece of wood. He orders Jimmy back to the wagon to be part of his freak show, but the boy refuses to do so and Dr. Freak attacks him. The man hands his card to the bubble boy and is then thrown away. Looking at the dwarf lying on the ground, the freaks think he is dead and decide to follow Jimmy. However, the boy says that he needs to go alone and goes into a roadside restaurant to ask for a ride. When he arrives at the place, he realizes that some men are humiliating an Indian guy for his religion and tries to intervene. The sheriff then asks why Jimmy is inside that bubble and the boy reveals that he has no immunity. Upon hearing this, that bunch of ignorant people flee the scene, believing immunity to be a contagious disease. As everyone is running out of the establishment, a lamp is knocked to the floor and breaks, starting a fire. While trying to escape, Jimmy is saved by Pushpop and they both escape in an ice cream and curry truck. After they leave town, the whole place explodes. Hours later, the boy's parents finally find the train, but Dr. Freak informs them that he has escaped and was headed to Niagara Falls. While they are talking, the freaks steal the couple's car and go after Jimmy. While Pushpop is driving, the bubble boy is sleeping next to him and has a bizarre nightmare. He dreams that Chloe has been devoured by a dinosaur from Land of the Lost and Mark manages to save her. When he is about to be devoured in his dream, the young man wakes up screaming. At this point, the Indian is startled and ends up running over a cow. The problem is that in his religion, Hinduism, the cow is a sacred animal. Jimmy tries to cheer him up, but ends up making the situation worse. The man then hands the boy a popsicle and asks him to leave. On the way, the young man devours the ice cream and discovers that this is the best food there is. Since the couple's car had been stolen, the dwarf decides to help them steal a truck, on the condition that they take him along to retrieve his freaks. As Pushpop says his prayers in honor of the dead cow, a truck appears and tears apart the animal's body. The bikers appear shortly afterwards and Slim asks if he has seen a yellow bus full of young people passing by. The man claims that no yellow bus has passed by, and the bikers decide to stay for ice cream. While they are eating, the vehicle appears and destroys all the bikes. Just then, Chloe is already preparing for the ceremony and talks about Jimmy with her sister-in-law. 
The young woman proves to be insecure about her marriage and reveals that she has amorous feelings for her friend. However, her sister-in-law asserts that Chloe made the right choice in deciding to marry Mark. When he reaches the next town, Jimmy meets a taxi driver and the man informs him that he will charge $500 to take him to the falls. Luckily for the boy, there is a $500 prize giveaway going on at the bar next door. However, to receive the money, he will need to compete in a ring with two women in a tub of paint. Minutes later, he leaves the bar with the money in hand, but is approached by the cult's members, who try to kidnap him. Just then, the freaks appear. They see their friend being taken away and run to rescue him. To fit in, they put on the same uniform that the young people were wearing, and while retrieving Jimmy, they are approached by the bikers, who use the ice cream truck to get to the scene. While the three groups are fighting among themselves, Jimmy runs to the taxi and asks Pappy to drive away. On the way, the old man says that the last time he got into a mess like that was because of a woman. 86 years ago, his twin brother, Pippi, stole his Chinese wife, Poon, and took her to Texas. Since then, Pappy has never seen them again. During the long trip, Jimmy ends up sleeping. When he wakes up, he tries to talk to the old man, but the old man, although his eyes are wide open, does not answer him. The bubble boy then goes into despair, believing that Pappy has died at the wheel. When he looks ahead, the young man realizes that they are reaching the end of the road and gets up to jump out of the vehicle. However, the old man makes a sharp turn and ends up throwing Jimmy against a billboard. The boy ends up in a beer warehouse and uses the phone to call Chloe. However, Mark, her fiancé, answers the phone. When he hears Jimmy's voice, he asks him to return to Palmdale and leave them alone. Disappointed that he can't reach the girl, he decides to call Dr. Freak. When she hears her son's voice, Mrs. Livingston picks up the phone and asks where Jimmy is. Now that they have managed to get the boy back, they no longer need the dwarf and decide to throw him on the road. While waiting for his mother, the young man decides to get a beer and ends up knocking over all the cans in the cooler. Then Jimmy goes to the attendant and asks if he can take the drink without paying, because he has no money and that is the favorite beer of the girl he loves. The woman allows the boy to take the drink, and when he leaves, she continues the robbery. Outside, the boy takes the first sip of beer and passes out. Just then, his parents appear and his mother asks Morton to take him to the car while she goes to the bathroom. Seeing the sadness on his son's face, the man unlocks the vehicle door and allows the young man to continue his mission. When the woman returns and sees Jimmy running away, she orders Morton to go after him. Then the young members of the cult appear, along with the freaks and the bikers. Now everyone is after Jimmy at the same time, and to escape, the boy decides to hitch a ride on a plane that is in the middle of taking off. Minutes later, he discovers that the person who is flying the aircraft is Pippi, Pappy's twin brother. Meanwhile, all the vehicles collide with each other and Mrs. Livingston spots Slim, who remembers her as Wildfire. Minutes later, the duo reaches their final destination, and just as they are flying over the falls, they almost have an accident. However, Pippi manages to get the plane to take off again and Jimmy ends up falling into the water. He descends the waterfall and manages to reach the surface. By this time, the ceremony is already underway and the couple recites their wedding vows. When Chloe is asked if she accepts Mark as her husband, the young woman is unable to answer yes. Instead, she stays silent, which allows Jimmy to arrive in time to stop the wedding. Upon seeing her friend, the girl feels extremely happy, but Mark is furious. He orders Jimmy to leave, but the boy is determined to talk to Chloe. Jimmy opens his bubble and states that he would rather spend one minute in the arms of the woman he loves than his whole life knowing he didn't do that. Then the young man asks if he can kiss the bride and they have their first and last kiss. After saying he loves Chloe, Jimmy falls to the ground and his mother appears screaming in the church window. The bride tries to revive him and claims that she has always loved him. Mrs. Livingston soon enters with her husband, and behind them are all the people the boy met on his adventure to Niagara Falls. When they find the boy dead, they are devastated, but Morton asks his wife to tell his son the truth. The woman claims that at the age of four, Jimmy developed his immunity, but to keep him safe, she tricked him so that she could keep the boy under her surveillance for all these years. Upon hearing this, the young man feels a mixture of anger and sadness, but in the end, he forgives the woman and states that he still loves her. The couple embrace and leave the church holding hands. Months later, they celebrate their wedding and are attended by Pushpop and his new followers. In addition, Dr. Freak, the Freaks, and the bikers were also present to celebrate with the youngsters. Even Slim joined Jimmy's family, joining his parents. Just as they are leaving for their honeymoon, the couple is taken by Pippi, Pappy and Poon, who, after years, have decided to make amends. That was the happy ending for the bubble boy and his friends. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, 
Please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.